sometimes kindness doesn't work in the sense that you're you're yeah. not getting the result because some people are are stubborn yeah. and, uh, and and not logical or just mean people. Yeah. So you know sometimes it doesn't work. But that that was t to my point is that you can still be respectful and kind, but it doesn't mean you have to be a doormat. I don't. There's there's no boundary on kindness. You can't be too kind, but it doesn't mean you can't be strong and tough at the same time. It goes without saying that our world today needs kindness. In, in an era of opposing opinions and agendas and perspectives and values, people often get angry with those who don't think like them and act like them and believe like they do. Candace, you, you uh, spent years on a, a worldwide stage sharing your views alongside other people who share very different views. Mm -hmm. And sometimes those views could be personally offensive. Sometimes they can be dishonoring to God. Sometimes uh, ratings get better when you ditch the kindness and you really go at each other. But you never, you never really did that. And I think that's one of the things that people appreciate about you. How do you manage to stay kind with people who are not being kind in return? I always try to think about their perspective or where they're coming from. Mm -hmm. from. Um, of course, sometimes if, if we're talking about maybe an angry person, there's probably a lot of hurt behind that. Mm. I'm not a psychologist, obviously, but there, you know, there, there's a lot to that that we can look into and thought, you know, they've probably been, been burned or hurt in some way yeah. that they now feel very passionate and can be aggressive about this perspective. So I think trying to look at it, hear the circum or hear their perspective and have empathy can help diffuse that. But, you know, a gentle voice, it, it, it always diffuses, or I shouldn't say always, but for the most part, I believe it will diffuse a situation. And that's why yeah. I've always tried to keep that gentle, calm voice in the face of an yeah. argument. Yeah, and, 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 and again, that's just proving God's words true. In, in Proverbs, it says that a gentle word, a kind mm -hmm. word, will just sort of like calm a situation, mm -hmm. but an angry word's gonna stir up even more yeah. strife. W what's harder? Is, is it harder to stay kind to people who don't understand your Christian faith <laughs> and they're just sort of railing against your worldview, or is it harder to, to stay kind with people who actually have Bible verses in their Instagram bio and they're still railing against you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is like an easy question to answer. Uh, I would much rather talk to a person that is not a faith that's angry at me. It's much easier, actually, than to talk to a person of faith that, that strongly disagrees or doesn't think that I'm Christian enough or I don't have the right theology or I'm a different denomination and get so angry when... We're supposed to be one body in Christ. And yes, of course, there are going to be differences in theology and denomination and all of yeah. that. But I find it much more difficult to talk to those people, which makes me so sad yeah, we should... for the body of Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Why is it hard? <laughs> why is it hard when it's with somebody within the family? Oh. I guess because we feel like you should know me better than this or you should. Yeah. Right? Like, or like, mm -hmm. where's the grace? Or where's the... Exactly. Oh, know, like I, ex I expect this from somebody else who doesn't understand the grace of God, but you. Right. Like, you should know this. You should know this. And that's kind of what I hear a lot, too, is like, well, Candace, you should know this. You should be doing it this way. Well, yeah. I might have a different opinion. And, and then, they, then they might say, well, if, if you weren't a believer, I'd expect you to do that. But you're a believer. You should know better <laughs> than to do that. Yep. Why is kindness so, so, so powerful, do you think? Kindness has to be learned because we are sinful beings by nature and we have to be taught to be kind. It is not a natural quality that as human beings we have. We are by nature s selfish mm -hmm. people. Yeah. And so kindness takes effort. I think that's why it's so challenging. We have to learn it, we have to apply it. It becomes an action. We have to be mindful of it. And sometimes it's just easier to let the emotions and the anger and some of those other um, unhappier emotions just get the best of you because they want to come out so fast. But having kindness means you do have to stop and think about it because it's not the natural instinct. Yeah. And 
and then you have to honestly think about, okay, how, how should I respond to this? Yeah. What would Christ want me to do? How can I be the best ambassador or representative of Christ right now in this situation? Mm. And it's difficult. I think that's why it's so hard and challenging for a lot of us. And the times when I feel kindness affect me so powerfully is when I know that person had every right to just <laughs> rail on me because yep. I'm being a jerk yep. or I'm being selfish or unkind and they show me kindness instead. I go, yep. oh, I know. I'm like I know. coals on top of my head, burning yep. coals on top of my head. It's a scripture reference. <laughs> <laughs> Look it up. And, I f and my conscience wakes up and I say, mm -hmm. you know what? I didn't deserve for that person to be kind to me. And that's when it most powerfully affects yes. me. Is it, is it really what, what we just talked about? Is it realizing that like I've been given kindness I don't deserve mm -hmm. and that's what motivates me? Because there's times where I'm around difficult people and I'm like, bro, I just, <laughs> yeah. I'm not, we're not on the same page. Yeah. And I just don't feel like dealing with you. Yeah, but kindness doesn't mean you have to be agreeable. It just means you have to be kind and respectful within the conversation or whatever action is taking place. And so I always think that, you know, sometimes people will even mistake me or, or a, a Christian in general, in general and think that we um, are passive or um, should be meek, but, that, but being meek doesn't mean strong. And um, th you know, those are all false things. We can still be kind mm. and loving, but, but speak truth and be strong in those words and stand up for God, yeah. stand up for what's right. We just don't have to yell and scream and pound our fist yeah. and um, just say things that we'll regret. Yeah. It's about being calm and, and sober in demeanor and having those respectful conversations, even if they're uh, not in agreement. Yeah, so, so here's an interesting thought. Sometimes we're kind and we're doing what the Lord wants us to do and the results aren't what we think they should be. Lord, I was kind, but this whole thing just blew up in my face. Um, and so the question is, how can we be kind without becoming a doormat for right. somebody? And yet, Jesus was really kind and he wound up on a cross. Mm -hmm. Are there boundaries for kindness so that I don't become a doormat? Or do I go full, is it a full send with turn the other cheek and maybe I wind up on a cross? When I, when I get into this situation, I just call my husband. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, hey, yeah. I've tried being kind. It's not working. I need you to step need, in here. And bring Boris. <laughs> and bring and Boris. Bring Boris some the days, Rottweiler. Some days you just need that. That's right. Did Boris have breakfast? <laughs> hey, don't give it to him. Just come on down here to the set. I got somebody for him to meet. It's a challenge. It really is because sometimes kindness doesn't work in the sense that you're, you're yeah. not getting the result because some people are, are stubborn. Yeah. And, uh, and, and not logical or just mean people. Yeah. So, you know, sometimes it doesn't work, but that, that was to my point is that you can still be respectful and kind, but it doesn't mean you have to be a doormat. I don't, there's, there's no boundary on kindness. You can't be too kind, but it doesn't mean you can't be strong and tough at the same time. You're, you're exactly right. I think maybe we could look to the verse um, in scripture that says to us, what does God require of us but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with God. Mm. And I go back to that sometimes. I go, mm -hmm. okay, I, I, gotta, I gotta do the right thing. I wanna love mercy, and that's being kind, and I wanna be humble, and I walk with God trusting that even if this doesn't turn out, if that person doesn't see that my kindness is, you know, is undeserved and therefore changed, God's gonna work the whole thing out. Right. In the end, he's still working all things together yep. for good for those who love him. Yep. And, uh, and, and, and that's exactly where I wanna be. Even if it winds me up in a place that's painful, uh, mm -hmm. I know that nothing's gonna separate me from the love of God and he's gonna work all this out for our good. Yeah, and as someone who tries to practice kindness every day, I'll tell you, when I, when I don't practice kindness, it makes me feel bad. 
I don't, I don't want to be that person. Yeah. So there's also another result of that where, where um, I would rather let, I want that to sit with God. I want God to ultimately have justice and his will be done. Because if I, if I go the other way, it just, it doesn't sit well with me and God. And I want to be, I want our relationship to be good before yeah. I just get the last in, the last word in with someone else. 